Alrighty, welcome back everybody. In this video, Mr. Rabel is going to be showing you how to use configuration variables in Onshape. Now, configuration variables are going to be really important for our Automata project. That's what we're really going to be focusing on trying to use. Now, what you might be wondering is what the heck are configuration variables? Now, configuration variables <clears throat> is basically where we're allowed to use variables um, <clears throat> to set up different configurations. So if you go right here, you can click this, this is configuration panel. If I press this drop down, you can click this to create configuration variables. Now, let me just start off by showing you a very easy example. Let's say that we're gonna create a configuration variable called width. Default, we can make this a default value. What you can also do is you can include minimums and maximum. So let's just say like at minimum, this uh, width for this variable can only be 1.5. And then the max, let's say we're gonna max it out where it can only be four, Oops, sorry. It can only be four. Now check this out. So what I can do is I could go in here and I could create a sketch. So I could end up using the center point rectangle tool, right? Just to make sure that I'm centered. And then what I can end up doing is as you can see, there's this configurations window over here that shows up now. Now what I can do is I can type in here, this is where you gotta kind of be careful. So if you, Basically, every time that we're trying to reference this configuration variable, we always want to use a hashtag. Um, so what we would want to do is you can either press escape. This thing's going crazy. You can either press escape and then go to dimension like this, and then you can type in the hashtag, and then you can click on width there. Um, what you can also do is if you go on here, you can um, type in a number and then press backspace, and then you can also do this. So as you can see now, this width was used of the two, right? Now, if I divide this by two, this is going to end up being equal to what? One, right? So now what we end up seeing is this is following that configuration variable, right? Both of these are following those variables that we have. So if I go back into the sketch, if I double click on this, you'll see that it's just the width variable, right? Now, this guy is width divided by two. So what we're going to see is if I press the green check mark and if I come in here and I change this to the maximum value we could have, right, which is four, what we're going to see is that this is going to change in size. And we're also going to note that this does have the same proportion, right, but it is a scaled up version. Now, what I could also do is I could go down to 1.5. I believe that was our minimum. Yeah. So then now you can see it became smaller. I can type in three. It'll double in size, right? So these are what configuration variables allow us to do. Basically, they allow us to use variables and we can end up uh, scaling up or scaling down the size of uh, our sketches or just any parts, any any um, of the parts, right? So now what I can also do is I can extrude this sketch. And then now if I can go in here to depth, what I can also do is I can use the width again. So now in this case, it's three. Let's say, okay, well, I want it to be a fourth of what the overall width is this this depth of this so now as you can see we've got that set up and then once again if i go back in here and i make it four you'll see that this is basically scaling down right and so what does this allow us to do this allows us to very easily make quick changes to our parts so then now what i can also do is i can go into the configuration panel and then what i could also do is i could create a new configuration variable so let's just say that i want to create one for the thickness I could do that, and then let's just say that I want to be able to control what the actual value of this. Maybe we want it to be by default, uh, let's go 0.75 inches, and then maybe we're like, okay, the very minimum could be 0.25 inches, and then the very max could be one inch, right? So then now what I can do is I can actually reference this configuration variable now up here. So, excuse me, if I go back into the sketch, instead of doing width divided by four now, I can put in the hashtag or the pound symbol. Sorry, I keep on referencing it hashtag there's probably gonna be somebody on here on this video saying mr Rainbow, what do you think and this is the pound symbol but uh you know i'm just trying to be hip with the lingo so it is the pound symbol technically but um so if i type in pound or hashtag symbol and do thickness what we're going to see is that now this is going to use the thickness that i put in here now i could do 0.25 it'll make it that now if i do try to put in something that is lower than the minimum check out what happens here See how it tells me enter value between 0.250 and 1.00? Current value is 0.2, so that doesn't work. Maybe I make it 0.3, then that works, okay? So that is kind of like a little introduction to what configuration variables are. What we're going to do now is we're actually going to go ahead and create a sketch, um, and we're gonna actually create the first part for our um, 
automata. And so now what this is, is this is the pair cam. And so what we're going to end up doing is we're going to actually create um, this pair cam and we're going to make sure that it follows the specific dimensions that we need. And we also want to make sure that we're using uh, the configuration variables as well in this. Okay. So what we're going to go ahead and do is I see that this radius down here, this is the radius of this big part, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this to diameter. So the diameter of this instead of radius, it's just this value multiplied by two, right? So instead of being 1.25, it's going to be 2.5. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm actually going to go to the configuration panel again. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually delete these. So I can also delete these. So if you ever mess up, you know, you can always delete those. Then what we're going to do is we're going to click configuration variable. Now what I'm going to name this is, um, I'm going to name this big dia, dia for diameter. So now what we're going to do is we're going to put in here for the default. Remember, I said that the radius is 1.25. So we're going to double that because it's going to be the diameter. We're going to go 2.5. What we could do is we could technically put in a minimum and also a maximum in here. Let's just say that that's going to be 1.5 and 3. Okay. So now I'm going to press the green check mark. And then what you see is that we got the configuration variable big D up here. Some other things that we'd maybe want to do is set this up so that there's also the whole diameter. So let's do that. Let's do um, configuration variable. And then let's just type in whole in here. Now this is 0.25. And then now what we can also do is we could change this, maybe it's 0.2 and then 0.3 for those. And then we'll press the green check mark. So then now what we want to do is we want to use these configuration variables that we've set up. And so now we're going to go into the front plane. I'm going to click new sketch. And then what we're going to start off by doing is creating this huge circle right here. So now I'm going to go in here. I'm going to use the center point circle. Then I'm going to go ahead and create this. Now what I want to do once again is I want to put in the big diameter right for the configuration variable in here because once we change this it'll also change the sketch entity as well right the size of it so just as i said before if you actually try to put in the pound symbol or hashtag symbol here it's going to give you an error i'm just going to press uh, a random number on my keyboard and then that will allow me to press the pound symbol and then type in big dia so that's for the big diameter right it's 2.5 and then what we would want to do next is we want to create this little guy right here so this is the whole diameter right so then now we're going to do things a little bit differently. We're going to actually create a square cutout for this is what we're going to want. And then so I can type in a random number and then I'm going to put in whole. Now I'm going to press enter. And then what we're also going to do here is type in a random number and then type in whole. And then we're going to press enter once again because we're going to do a square cutout for these. Our axle is actually going to be a square. So the next thing that we want to do is we want to create a line. And so I'm going to go ahead and... Actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna take that back. I'm gonna actually create a center point circle next. I'm gonna make sure that it has this vertical constraint, and then we're going to create this. And now this is going to be we're gonna so that's what happens if you try to put in the hashtag. By the way, I'm gonna put a random number, and then what I need to do is I need to designate what this is. So the radius of this is 0.25 inches, right? The diameter would be half of an inch. So now what we want to do is we want to reference this big diameter here. And so we're going to go uh, hashtag big dia divided by five because 2.5 divided by five is going to be half of an inch, right? So we're going to set that up. Now next, what I want to do is I want to create some lines down here. So I'm going to create a line here and then I'm going to press escape. I can press L on my keyboard again. We're going to create a line here again. We're going to create that, press escape. And then now what we want to do is we want to make sure that these lines this line is tangent to this circle and then we also want to make sure that this line is tangent to this guy as well so this should be tangent and then let's just double click these just to make sure everything's good yeah, everything's golden yep so we're pretty good the last thing that we need to do is we need to make sure that from the center point of this to the center point of this arc that's up here this should be 1.25 inches now, what you might be thinking is, oh, well, Mr. Rainbow, let's just dimension this, and then let's dimension right here, and then we can just type in 1.25, right? Well, what we want to do once again is we want to be referencing this big dia. So we're going to put in hashtag big dia, divide that by 2, because 2.5 divided by 2 is going to be equal to 1.25, and then now, as you can see, we've got that. Finally, this thickness is 0.25 inches as well, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to also reference the big dia once again so now we're going to press extrude as you can see this does go a little crazy what we can also do is we can come in here to the sketch and then we can 
trim this. And I don't know if you all can hear the dog out there, but that dog, DOG, be going crazy. Um, what we are finding here is whenever I trim this, it's giving us a little bit of an error. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this guy right here. I'm going to delete this. And then so now you can see our error goes away. Press screen check mark. And then now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to extrude this. And so just as we said, we could use Big Dia for this. What we can also do is if I go in here, configuration panel, I can also create a new configuration variable. And so I'm going to just go ahead and press screen check mark on the extrude. And then if I go right here, configuration variable, I'm going to create a new configuration variable. I'm going to name that THK for thickness. I'm going to set the default value to a quarter of an inch. I'm going to do the minimum to be 0.2 and then the maximum to be 0.3. Then I'm going to press the green check mark. Now we've got the thickness in there. And then so now what I can do is I can actually go back into this extrude and I can change this value to reference that thickness, right? So now I'm going to press the green check mark. And then now, as you can see, we've got our pair cam created. And what we can actually do is we can change some of the values in here, right? So maybe the big diameter is going to become 3. And then the hole is going to become 0.5, let's say. Now, as you can see, that gives us an error. Why is that? Because the hole can only be 0.3. Now, what we do see here is that there is an error, right? So now what we want to do is we want to go back into the sketch. And what we want to make sure is that this line is tangent to that circle right there. And so what we also want to make sure is that that's tangent as well. And so now let's try this out again. We can run through this again. And so now we can see it's looking a whole lot better, right? So 0.25, we change this back to 2.5. That's looking pretty good. Thickness as well, right? We could change the thickness. Thickness, we're going to make that um, 0.5. Do we allow that? No, 0.3 is the most we can do. So we could put 0.3 in there. As you can see, it does become a little bit thicker. We could also go 2.2. You'll see that it becomes smaller. But I'm going to go ahead and put these back to the original values that we had them at, which is 2.5, 0.25, and 0.25. But what you're going to end up seeing is that basically whenever we bring this into our assembly and we create our automata, the final product, you're going to be able to easily make some changes to your cams using these configuration variables while you're in the assembly. Anyways, hope that was helpful. Please remember everybody, like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell for the notifications. I will see you all later. Have a good one. Bye-bye.